Just sweet Ayla, it's me Ayla. No wahala, that means I need to try harder. No stress, no wahala, that means I need to try harder. Make sure you follow me on social media and check in more with Exhibit Plus. You don't want to miss it. Hey everyone, it's me, Ayla. I'm here with Exhibit Plus. We're here to do an exclusive interview and also check out my song. Sun your eye, my guy, so many lies. We multiply, put a guns, say love, say love. Okay, so first question is, what is my name and what is my music genre? Okay, I go by Ayla and I do Afro music. I wouldn't necessarily call it Afro beats because, you know, just like Memphis music, you have country, you have rock, you have hip hop, and we add a Memphis touch to it. I mean, same thing with Nigerian music. We add our own touch to the music. The next question is, can you tell us about your journey in the music industry and what inspired you to start? I've actually been in the music industry for a very long time. Um, since I was 17 years old, I started off as a guitar player. And so I've always been around um, different music people, I've always been around celebrities and learning the way of how you're supposed to act, how you're supposed to walk. And what really inspired me to start back was just seeing the Afrobeat community, you know, get popular in the United States. And I knew I wanted to be a part of helping everybody, you know, more awareness of the culture and more awareness of, you know, the Afrobeat artists of the music industry. Cause there's a lot of different ins and outs to the music industry that a lot of the Nigerians don't know and so I wanted to help them navigate through that system. The next question is, <laughs> who is your biggest music influence and how have they shaped your sound? Um, a lot of people, if you know me, Iyanya is my absolute favorite artist and the reason why I picked him as the most influential is because when I was in college, I would go through certain things and I would just turn on his music and it would help me. He used to have this one song, um, it would go, I forgot his song, oh my gosh, okay. okay. Oh, the song would go, hold on to the end now, till it feels right. So I would sing that song and keep my head straight in college, but then, you know, I still end up picking the wrong guy. <laughs> but, you know, it helped me keep my focus on my studies versus chasing the guys like all the other girls were doing. <laughs> um, the next question is, what is the story behind your latest single or album? Okay, my song, Leg Up, a lot of people don't know. I actually wrote this song about one of my friends back home. He's a boxer and he has so much potential and so much going for himself and seeing how he's always so determined, so driven, you know, I watched his life and I was like Big Bethel, you know, I made this song about you and about how you hustle. And so if you really pay attention, it's about the life of a boxer. The next question is, how do you approach the songwriting process? Do you have any specific rituals or routines? Absolutely. I'm known for blending Memphis and blending Nigeria. So when you're blending the two, I always think about Project Pack and I'm like, does this song sound like Project Pack for a rap on it? If it doesn't, then it's, it's not good enough. So that's really my process with that. The next question is, what theme or message do you hope to convey through your music? The culture, the Memphis culture, the Igbo culture. I want people to compare and contrast the two. I want people to know that there's so many similarities like Suya and Memphis barbecue are so similar. So I want people to see that even though we're 
from different areas. We're so much alike. The next question is, how do you handle creative blocks or challenges in your music career? <laughs> I don't really have creative blocks. Actually, I have too many creative things going on. <laughs> but I do have a lot of challenges with blending the two genres together. Um, when I'm doing a song, sometimes I want to go too much Memphis culture. I want to you know, keep it on that side. Or sometimes I'm doing too much Nigerian culture and the American side, don't, it, they don't really understand. So it's trying to find that balance, I think is the hardest thing that I have to face. The next one is, if you can collaborate with any artist, living or dead, who would it be and why? I haven't really thought about that one. I guess it would be Odomoto because Mm, maybe it'll be Yimmy. Uh, Yimmy, I'm a dad because she's a strong woman and I love her energy. She's actually my role model. And so doing a collaboration with her would be out of this world. The next question is, what roles does social media play in your career and how do you engage with your fans? First of all, if anybody knows me, they know I hate the word fans. Even my followers will tell you I don't do the word fans because I feel like fans makes you seem like you're higher than someone else. And I don't believe in that. Like I call my fans my dream guiders because we're all on a mission. We're all on a dream to help push the culture forward. And even if they're not there for that and they're there just to support the music, you know, I don't treat social media like this is something I'm doing to gain fans. I treat these people like they're my family. They're people that, you know, we're all here to help each other. So as for engagement, you know, I just be myself. I talk with all my fans, all my dream guiders. Like if you message me, it may take a few months, but I'll message you back. Like I keep it very simple, very down to earth. How has your music evolved over the years and where do you see yourself headed in the future? If anyone has involved in music, it has to be me. I started out doing rock music and now here I am doing Afrobeats. Um, when I first started Afrobeats, I was very uncomfortable because it's a genre that I wasn't used to, but now that I'm getting more into it, I'm taking my past and I'm involving into my future. So you're gonna see a lot more of my edgier side coming out. I mean, no, we're still keeping it Afrobeat, but really that voice that I'm known for, it's gonna come out in a lot more of my songs and I'm excited about that. The next question is, what advice do you give to aspiring musicians trying to make it in the industry? Wow, okay, this question here. Um, I told you I've been in the industry for a very long time and I'm so grateful for the older artists that helped me. The number one thing I can say is take risks. You ha if you believe in yourself and you want this, take the risk. I mean, don't be scared about, hey, this person's scamming me, this person's... If you keep fighting for it, it will come to you. Just do it, you know? Don't look for someone to help you. Don't look for a handout. If you do you, those people will come to you. Um, next question, can you share any behind the scenes stories from your music video or album recordings? <laughs> yes, the song C'est La Vie. A lot of people don't know, um, I actually recorded three songs before that song. And I remember I called one of my old industry friends. I was like, hey, I wanna get back into music. Let's record something. He's worked with some of the top names in the industry, okay? And so the first song is hilarious. He was like, <laughs> like are you sure this is the song that you wanna put out? And I was like, yes, I wanna put out this song. He's like, you might want to talk to your team. He's like, because this song is going to be out there for the world to see. And 
he's like, you know, he's, you just need to talk to somebody about it. So he immediately threw that song out. So I brought him another song and he was like, no, this is not the song either. This one is bad, too. you know. And so he threw that song out again. And then I brought him another same thing. He threw that song out. So what I may say, like, be it's interesting. The song, when I say no stress, no wahala, it means I need to try harder, was actually to that engineer because I was like, no problem. I'll try again. I'll try again. And so that's where those lyrics came from. Um, and the last question, no, 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 uh, it says, what do you enjoy doing outside of music? Any hidden talents? Well, I love my business. I have a business called A-List Earth, and if I'm not doing music, I'm working on my business. It's a business where I create art, I create skincare, I have actually electronics that I invented, and so... If I'm not doing music, I'm finding new things to create for my business. That's what I do for fun. I mean, I'm an inventor. Um, and so the last question says, what can we expect from you in the near future? Any exciting projects? Definitely. Um, my sound, each song, my sound is getting stronger and I'm getting to know myself more and so I'm excited about my next project because I'm learning more to just be myself versus taking everybody else's opinion and doing what everybody else wants me to do because at the end of the day you know it's about me and my dream guiders and what we believe I should be not what the media believes I should be so the projects that I have coming up, I'm very excited about, and it's going to come up here in a few months, and I still have my events going on. I have one coming up in Memphis, so I hope I see you guys out. Bye-bye.